What up guys, salut, it's Alex. So today I am super excited because I got to share my new series with you. It's the first episode uh, and also it's a massive relief for me to do this because I've been keeping everything so secret and so silent for quite a while now. I think I only mentioned it three times, so that's very secret. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how to make fantastic French wine at home. And I'm not talking about prison wine, no, I'm talking about a holy beverage made by hand with fresh grapes. The journey started eight months ago. Even though I'm really getting close to the conclusion, it still is not uh, finished yet. This is where I am right now. And that's my wine aging properly in a barrel. I know it's a plastic bag, but a barrel just sounds better. The thing is, I'm not even sure this is gonna turn well. I'm not even sure this is gonna taste good. <laughs> But I think we will find out together. I started this whole journey in the precise state you stand right now. I mean, a complete ignorant. Ah, that's a bit offensive. Maybe something softer. A zero. I guess it only means that we can learn a lot in this process. So uh, I bought a few books online. I will put the links in the description box uh, down below. Also, I read tons and tons of stuff online just to get my head around it. Now I have a crispier uh, overview on all the wine making process. So let me just give you a quick and dirty crash course in wine making. So it goes like this. First, I'm not gonna start with like uh, juices or you know an extract. I want to do it proper. To mash them or stomp them with your bare foot, uh, we'll see about this. Three fermented for the first time. It's the alcoholic fermentation. Four, strain up all the liquid and end up the maceration. Five, ferment for the second time. It's called the malolactic fermentation. Six, bottle the wine. And seven, drink it and probably get a headache from it. So of course, it's a tad more complicated than, than this. I mean, interim stages, optional actions you can perform. But at the end of the day, that's basically it. So it just means it's not impossible. And so we're going to do it. Let me share with you a bit more detail about the type of wine we're gonna make. First, we're gonna make a red wine, simply because it's way easier to produce than a white wine. Second, in terms of volume, we're not gonna flood the market. We're more likely to, to make like five, six bottles. It's not a small production. It's called boutique. That's what it is. Last, in terms of quality, I have low expectations. I mean, if it's superb, if it's stunning, then I will be over the moon, of course. But if it's just drinkable, that's fine with me. I'll drink it. And if it's not drinkable, then I might try anyway. So as you understood, it's a long process, not because it's time consuming, but more because it uh, does spread across a wide period of time. Let me give you the key timing in such a process. This usually happens in the full season, like in September or October. After about one or two weeks, this is over. After about a month, a month and a half, this is over. And I would say that you have to wait a lot between uh, five and six. But after six to nine months tops, everything should be over and you should have beautiful bottles of wine. To start this, simply you don't need fancy equipment. In fact, I'm using a few buckets with their lead from the local hardware store. Super, super important, you absolutely need a sanitizing agent. I chose bleach because it's available, it's cheap and it bloody works. It kills bacteria and viruses in no time. However, in the wine making world, people tend to think it might not be the best option. Bleach will stain your clothing, it will irritate your skin, but the most annoying thing is that it leaves a persistent and super strong smell on all your equipment, meaning that you have to waste so much time cleaning and rinsing afterwards. So instead, go for a no-rinse sanitizer. The most famous is called Starsan, but there are plenty out there because home brewers use them a lot. Uh, I use Chemipro Oxy for that matter. So the reason why I insist on this is because this whole uh, winemaking adventure is uh, touchy in terms of safety. 
Each and every equipment must be thoroughly clean. That means removing stains with soap and a soft sponge, but it also must be deeply sanitized, meaning disinfected from bacteria and viruses before and after use. So I guess that's basically. Uh, the next episode will be about grapes, how to choose them because not all grapes are equal in terms of winemaking and also what to do with them and also the barefoot situation. If you like this project, if you are as excited as I am about this whole winemaking situation, please give this video a like, a big thumbs up, it really helps me a lot. If you want to go the extra mile, go check out my Patreon page where you can financially support my work. It really, really makes a difference. And last people click subscribe because I make new videos every week and you know it's always about food but it's also about inspiration, about confidence, about creativity, about pushing our world's boundaries. Just, you know, to make what I think is a valuable content. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Salut.